Welcome to my channel. My name is Ria and in this video we are going to go over the astrology for the full moon happening on 9th October 2022. So for this video I'm going to primarily focus on western astrology. I will mention a little bit about what this moon means in Vedic astrology and then towards the end of the video I will also mention very briefly according to your western astrology sign where this moon might be for your sun and rising signs and I will put timestamps in the description box so you can click on whichever part you want to watch and go directly to that. So let's get started but before that I do request you to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you can be notified every time I post a video and on my channel I post new moon horoscopes full moon horoscopes I did post a monthly for October as well and I look to put out one more videos so let's get started with what's happening for this full moon happening in the sign of Aries right now full moons generally speaking are considered points of completion something completes itself on a full moon right they're also considered points of clarity we can start to see something more clearly on a full moon so generally speaking broadly speaking that's what a full moon energy is and it is also associated with a lot of emotional release right emotions can run high on a full moon so generally that's what a full moon is completions culminations clarity emotional release right and this full moon is happening in the sign of aries you can see the moon right here is in the sign of aries and the sun is in libra the opposing sign and that's what makes a full moon when the sun and the moon are in opposition right so the moon is here in the sign of aries and that being said, it will highlight Aries themes, right? Aries is the beginning of the zodiac. It is a sign that is a lot about taking action, making things happen, right? It can be a very impulsive energy as well. It's about moving forward. So that's what Aries is, broadly speaking, generally speaking. And I don't mean that if you're Aries, you're all these things. We all have Aries somewhere in our chart. Generally speaking, Aries energy is about taking action. It's about moving forward. It's about, you know, wanting something and going and getting it. That's Aries. So these themes of taking action and making things happen are highlighted on this full moon. That being said, Aries on the negative, every sign has a positive manifestation and a negative manifestation. So on the negative side, it is this energy that can be aggressive, that can be impulsive, that can be, you know, um, it can act without thinking. And it is ruled by Mars, right? Mars is also known as the, as the planet of war. So on the other side, Aries is aggressive. It can be um, associated with violence as well, and it can be very impulsive. So these themes can be highlighted as well. At the same time, since this is a full moon, right? The sun and the moon are in opposing energies while Aries is all these things. What is Libra? Libra is right here. Libra is ruled by Venus and Venus is in Libra right now. And Libra is the sign of others. It's about friendship. It's about, you know, thinking about others. So that's Libra. Libra is also a very diplomatic energy. It's an energy that likes to weigh things out, right? It's the opposite of Aries. Aries is let's do this, let's do this now. Let's not think too much. Let's just take action. It can be impulsive, it can be aggressive. But Libra, on the other hand, is okay, is this the best way to move forward? No. What about the other person? What about the other person, right? What are they feeling, thinking, that sort of thing? It's diplomatic. So we have this contradictory energy. On one hand, there's this um, energy of being really aggressive, but there is this energy that's saying, hey, think it through, right? A little bit, be a little diplomatic. So we will have to balance 
these two energies that's what a full moon is it's asking us to integrate these two contradictory energies one of being impulsive and aggressive and moving forward full force and the other one of being diplomatic and thinking things through and you know thinking of the consequences so it's something that we will need to work with right we will need to find that balance between moving forward but also considering the other person's point of view of moving forward you know as fast as we want but also thinking of what those actions might lead to so um, that's the contradiction with this full moon right that's the contradiction of um, diplomacy versus um, being aggressive and being impulsive versus thinking things through a little bit and this can be magnified in our personal lives and on a collective level as well right so that's the first thing that i wanted to mention and if there is anything that's um, the most important theme of this moon it would be this trying to find that balance between the self between me between my identity right aries aries is our identity it's all about the I, right? It says I am. So it's all about finding that balance between me, my identity, what I want. I want this now and I will do this without thinking things through versus, you know, okay, what does the other person want? I'm trying to find that balance. What does the other person feel, right? Or let me think things through, hold back a little bit. Or, you know, there might be a better way to move forward which is not so impulsive which is not so aggressive diplomacy peace all these things can work as well so it's this contradiction between trying to find peace trying to find balance trying to be diplomatic versus this very aggressive impulsive energy and like i said it can manifest personally and collectively as well so that's the first thing i wanted to touch upon the second thing i want to touch upon Actually, now I'm going to get into the aspects of this moon and what that does is it colors the energy of this moon a little bit more, right? The signs kind of give it a basic theme, but the aspects um, add to those themes. And personally, right, these energies are relevant. However, I will also mention where this moon might fall for you in your personal charts according to your sun and rising signs. So just pay attention to that as well, right? That's important too. And that being said, how this moon is impacting your personal planets, right? That's also very important. So moving on to the aspects so i'm going to clean up the chart a little bit and then we will see the aspects right so the moon right here is conjunct chiron that right there is chiron right and chiron is um, known for its wisdom and it's known for its healing but the thing with chiron is right the healing or you know, even the wisdom comes after a lot of inner work. We really need to face our pain, face our wounds, to be able to access that wisdom, to be able to heal in many ways, right? So this moon is conjunct Chiron and Chiron mostly feels bittersweet, right? Because it's this healing element as well. It's this wisdom coming through as well. But it comes through only when we are willing to look at parts of ourselves that we don't really want to, right? The wounds, the pain, where we've been hurt, that sort of thing. So personally, this can bring up, you know, feelings of feeling, okay, why did this happen to me? Or this area of my life never really pans out the way I want it to. Or, you know, some past matter coming back up making you feel your pain your wounds again but the goal is to learn from those wounds right to find wisdom from those wounds and heal to be able to heal from those wounds right it's chiron is called the wounded healer and what what chiron does in our charts is that that area is a place where we where chiron is in your chart is a place where we have a lot of wounds right and through those wounds we accumulate a, a lot of wisdom so that's chiron 
so personally some wounds some pain can come up which we need to face but the goal is again to get better to find that wisdom to heal and to move on right collectively since aries is the sign of our identity as a collective as well it's the sign of um it's a mars ruled energy right it's about being aggressive and moving forward in that sense as well so some maybe wounding or some pain associated with the themes that i just mentioned the aryan themes of our identity or you know moving forward too fast too quickly not thinking things through that sort of thing so that's the conjunction to chiron now this moon is also sorry about that making an opposition of course the sun is there but venus is sitting right next to the sun right now personally speaking for our personal lives venus is about the relationships that we have right the partnerships in our lives now it's not necessary it's always a love interest right libra is the house of others so it could be any relationship specifically legal relationships it could be a spouse it could be a business partner it could be a mother in law father in law of course you know uh your significant other that sort of thing so venus represents these things relationships but it also represents financial matters right it also represents our own self worth how do we feel about ourselves that's venus as well so with venus aspecting the sun so closely almost conjunct right it is conjunct these themes of um our relationships of um you know financial matters of our own self worth are highlighted as well so that's there and with venus sitting right next to the sun collectively speaking right that energy of being diplomatic being peaceful approaching things in a loving way is um is highlighted as well right it's highlighted and venus rules the sign of libra where the sun is right so that energy of seeking harmony seeking peace seeking diplomacy seek seeking a partnership right seeking to work in a manner that's that works for both parties that's very that's very highlighted so with venus there to sum it up i would say that personally it can bring to focus venus themes which are also libra themes specifically relationships right also finances and how we feel about ourselves collectively the need to focus on peace harmony diplomacy is highlighted and venus there is supporting that as well right it is supporting that need so that's the second aspect that i want to to touch upon the third thing i want to mention is that saturn here right is making a supportive aspect with the moon and the sun right it is sextiling the moon and it is trining the sun right it is so what this means to me is before that before that saturn is the planet of structure it's the planet of our material world it's the planet of hard work decisions and discipline that's the positive manifestation of saturn right but the negative manifestation of saturn is this um need to control this need to restrict this feeling of feeling limited and restricted right so saturn can really control things and but this is a positive aspect so what this means to me is that personally whatever action we want to take aries right however we want to move forward after we weigh things out a little bit think things think things through you know think about the other people in our life then saturn can really help us find structure in moving forward because saturn can give structure it can help us get that discipline and hard work to move forward and take action right so that's the positive aspect to saturn on a collective level 
the Aries energy is being limited and restricted maybe by Saturn, but not in a very negative way. It's a positive aspect. So we have that influence, that grounding influence. Saturn is very grounding, right? We have that grounding influence with the Aries energy. So that's a positive thing, according to me. So that's the third aspect, right? That's the third aspect that's going on. Now, the next thing I want to mention is that Okay, let me let me clean up the chart and then we'll get to it. The next thing that I want to mention is that the Saturn Uranus square is on again, right? And to give you context, I speak about this in every video, but it is so important, right? So I will I will talk about this. So Saturn and Uranus have been squaring for a year now in 2021 this configuration a 90 degree angle between saturn and uranus came exact three times feb june and december which means it was the most intense feb june and december and now it's back on again right it's intense again and this is the last time that it's going to be so intense and what is this energy right let's break that down saturn is the structures that we've built, it's the tradition, it's the rules, right? Saturn is all these things. It's also um, the need to have structure in a way. And Uranus is the new, it's change, it's about moving forward, it's about thinking of doing things differently, right? It's about change. So since 2021, we've kind of been in this push and pull energy of change now in our personal lives this can manifest as really resetting the structures of our lives right how we work where we work what we do how we do our day our routine all those things restructuring those things also where saturn and uranus are in your chart right now but generally speaking it's this restructuring of how we did things pre-2020 i would say and how we do things now in our personal lives and on a collective level since these two these two are in aquarius and uh, taurus themes of aquarius and taurus are highlighted what are those themes so taurus is about the financial financial stuff right it's a financial sign along with scorpio so it's about finances it's about economy it's about currency it's about the earth so food resources raw materials taurus is all these things so with uranus there it's not only changing up these things but be mindful that uranus is a slow moving energy so slowly it's changing up these things but it is bringing these things to the focus more so this year since Jan, because the North Node, Rahu, right here, is in Taurus as well. So these themes, financial themes, economies, currencies, um, what else did I say? Food resources, raw materials, right? All these are magnified and the Saturn Run Square is also highlighting these. And on the other hand, Aquarius, right? Aquarius is a Uranus ruled sign, but Aquarius is to do with the new, right? It is change. It's about progr uh, progressing. It's about science. It's about tech. It's about innovation. It's about the new age, so to speak, right? So these themes are highlighted as well. So I will sum it up. The Saturn Uran Square on a collective level is highlighting themes of the economies, currencies, raw materials, food resources. And on the other hand, with Aquarius, it is highlighting science, tech, innovation, that sort of thing. So on this moon, personally, we can feel that intensity of, you know, changing more when it comes to the structure of our personal lives. And let's not forget Uranus here is at 18 degrees, right? 18 degrees is the spot where Uranus and the North Node, Uranus and Rahu, these two, they met up on July 31st after 15 years. They meet once in about 15 years, right? And when they meet up, it's this big energy of change in our lives. So they met up back then and Uranus has been at this degree since then, right? So that change that started for us July 31st is um, still on in many ways. And last year last year when saturn and uranus were squaring the 
pull of the past was more than the pull of the future, so to speak. But since July 31st of this year, right, the pull of the future is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. So this is the final time they're going to square and it's going to be the most intense in October. And then it's going to ease off. And what this means is that this is the final step. And whatever change that has been urging to happen, that we have been working on, Feb, June, December, especially last year, it, it's going to happen now. This is the final step for that change, the final process. The process is going to complete itself. So personally, it's to do with the structure of our lives, right? How we are changing that. And uh, collectively, it's the themes that I mentioned. So that is also going on. Uh, very in a very strong way on this full moon in Aries and yeah moving on to the next thing that I want to discuss we have Mercury here in a trine with Pluto now Mercury was retrograde from about September 10th around then to October 2nd right so it was retrograde and when Mercury is retrograde communication can really slow down so September was this energy with so many planets in retrograde right so many that it was a lot about reviewing things it's about it's it was a lot about taking a second look at whatever we worked on in the past and that energy of retrogrades can feel slow it can make us feel slightly stuck but now, on this moon, Mercury is direct and so is Pluto, right? Pluto just went direct. And what this means is that there's forward movement, right? What this means is that whatever we felt last month in terms of feeling maybe a communication slowing down or things aren't moving as fast, the pace of life is picking up again. Let's just put it that way. And Pluto is this planet of transformation. It's about bringing things to the surface, whatever is hidden um, underneath. And Mercury is our mind, right? So this could be a transformative moment when it comes to maybe thinking about something or maybe a transformative conversation or communication takes place. Or this can also be something that, uh, deep inside our mind comes to the surface, right? Or something changes connected to our routine and diet and health and lifestyle because Mercury is all those things as well and it's in Virgo right now, right? Diet, lifestyle, health, routine, all these things are very Virgo, so yeah. So that's also there, a transformative energy, maybe a transformative piece of communication, maybe some transformation to our environment or some transformation to our routine or thinking, that sort of thing can also happen. And this is on a personal level, right? Changing up the environment, changing up the routine, having um, a, a transformative thought or conversation, but collectively also, this can lead to transformative communication. This can lead to some sort of transformation on the health front, Virgo. This can lead to some sort of transformation when it comes to media or travel, right? Because Mercury is also travel and the media, social media especially. The last thing that I want to mention is that Mars here, right is going to retrograde at the end of October so it's already in the area right it's covering the decrees that it will retrograde over retrograde means like a planet moves forward right then it moves back retrograde and then it moves forward again so right now it's in that zone where it will go back over right so what that means is that we will review these themes that, that are coming up very strongly, right? Mars is where we focus our energy. Mars is where we take a lot, lot of action. So think about which area of your life you're focusing a lot of your, your energies in and those things can come up for review and Mars is going to be retrograde till Jan and then it will get out of its um, retrograde zone. The degrees it will retrograde over in March, right? So the next, how many months is that? Um, five, six months, about that much, we will be actively working on things, reviewing things, and then 
thinking what's the best way to move forward. If you know your charts, look for Mars, look for Gemini. If you don't know your chart, pay attention to where you're putting in a lot of your energy, right? And that's personally, collectively, Mars is retrograding in the sign of Gemini. So it is going to ask us to take a second look at Gemini themes, right? Travel, media, communication, facts, information, that sort of thing. And in Vedic, it is retrograding in Taurus mainly, but Gemini as well. But it is retrograding in the nakshatra of Rohini and Mrikashira nakshatras are smaller divisions of a sign, right? So consider them like mini signs with them, with their own significance and with their own interpretation, right? So Mars will retrograde in Vedic over these two nakshatras, Rohini and Mrikashira. Rohini has a lot to do with communication as well as financial matters. And Mrikashira has a lot to do with investigation, research, fact checking information that sort of thing so all this can come up with mars retrograde and you can watch my video that i put up um a little while ago five things to know about october i go into detail about mars retrograde and planets moving forward and a few more things in that video so you can check that out if you're interested so that was the last thing that i wanted to mention and now i will tie all this up uh, together to give you an essence of what this might mean for you so personally this is about taking action and moving forward right Aries is about that however that being said to move forward we might need to face some wounds we might need to find that self-worth in ourselves we might need to um, find some wisdom to move on at while we are so focused on doing our own thing, moving forward, taking action, we must be mindful of others. We must approach things not in an impulsive way, not in an aggressive way, but in a more diplomatic way, in a way that we seek to find peace and harmony, right? So moving forward after facing our uh, pain, our wounds, while at the same time considering what others might be going through and you know thinking things through so that's the first thing after we maybe um, you know face our pain and our wounds and are willing to look at other person the other person's perspective the other side work in a peaceful diplomatic manner saturn is there supporting us to be able to take structured action right to be able to find that discipline and hard work within us to move forward and the saturn uran square is back on again we are restructuring our lives that we have been doing we have been restructuring since 2021 but this is the final restructuring of our lives in many ways so that energy can feel very intense so be mindful of that pay attention to where you're putting in a lot of energy right now these are the things that will come up for review and you will need to work on these things over the course of the next five six months this is a transformative energy when it comes to communicating conversations that can uh, begin things end things or really change things can happen we can also change our diet lifestyle health and routine we can also maybe change up our immediate environment or some deep-seated thoughts deep transformative thoughts can um come to the surface and with venus next to the sun right relationships uh, financial matters our own self-worth can be highlighted with this moon as well now collectively speaking with the sign of aries it is important to consider the others right consider not just yourself your own identity but others as well and there's a need to balance this um let's move forward let's take action um, this aggressive energy of mars and aries with let's talk let's focus on peace let's be diplomatic let's think about others right there's this need to balance the two and saturn here since it is aspecting aries it can lend a grounding influence to this arian and libran energy right it can lend a grounding influence to that so 
and also themes of economies, currencies, financial matters, raw materials, food resources, along with science, tech, innovation. Um, these themes can be highlighted as well. So that's the moon in a nutshell. It is an extremely important one. I would say that it is, it is an extremely, it is a moon where we will need to need to work on channeling the Aries energy in a positive way, not in an impulsive way, not in an aggressive way, but in a way that we can take structured action, move forward uh, in a way that we can make our actions sustainable, in a way that we can make our own identity work with others, right? Find that balance between ourselves and others and focus on diplomacy and peace. So that's the moon in a nutshell, right? According to Western astrology. And the next moon is an eclipse. So we are going to be entering eclipse season with the next next moon, the new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio. And now I'm very briefly going to talk about Vedic astrology and where this moon is in Vedic astrology. So in Vedic astrology, right, the energies are about 24 degrees behind depending on the system you use it's about 24 degrees so this puts the moon in the sign of Pisces right so in Vedic this moon is happening in the sign of Pisces now Vedic also uses the nakshatra system right also known as lunar mansions now lunar mansions or nakshatras are smaller divisions of a sign they have their own significance own interpretation even their own ruler so this one and there are 27 right 27 that we use and there's another one a bijit nakshatra that makes 28 but that lies within another nakshatra so 27 let's just say 27 and this is the 27th nakshatra right it's called revati so this moon is happening in revati nakshatra which is ruled by mercury and revati is the complete end of the zodiac right it's the complete end and it is to do with this um energy where the change of consciousness takes place right so in Vedic, this thing of changing of consciousness, right, of stepping into something totally new or getting ready to step into something totally new is highlighted. And Revati is also to do with wealth, right? It's to do with material wealth, but it's also to do with spiritual wealth. So themes of material wealth right finances can be highlighted and spiritual spiritual wealth can also be highlighted so with revti the theme of transformation is a big one the theme of spirituality is a big one and the sun in vedic right in vedic astrology will be in hasta nakshatra hasta is a lot about working right hasta means the hands so it's about working it's about getting back to work it's about taking action and making things happen so in some ways right it aligns with the fact that we have to take that action and make things happen right and in western astrology it's about taking action making things happen but you know, thinking things through, considering the other person. In this case, I would say it's about getting back to work, taking action, making things happen, working at the same time with Revti, right? No matter what you do with Revti Nakshatra, till you have a spiritual element to what you do, the meaning doesn't come through, right? So, it's about getting back to work in a way that gives your life some meaning, that gives your life some, um, some spirituality, you can say, right? So little similar in that sense, not, not uh, very evident in the similarity, but similar in the sense it's about taking action, moving forward, making things happen. At the same time, focusing on a change in consciousness, transformation is important and focusing on spirituality. And what is spirituality at the end of it? It's about choosing love over war or hate or aggression, right? Which is what the Aries Libra axis is saying right now, right? Diplomacy and peace over aggression. So 
similar in that sense and that's Revti. One more thing I will mention is that, okay, I'm going to get a little technical here. Each nakshatra is further divided into four parts, right? And each part has um, a sign allotted to it. You can say that. So this, it's happening at 22 degrees of Pisces in Vedic. And this slot, you can say this pada is about Capricorn, right? And Capricorn it's a very practical energy. It's about being structured. It's about being disciplined. It's about dedication, right? So it's about being grounded, right? So that Saturn sextile and trine is showing up in this manner, according to me, with this pada being a Capricorn pada, right? So a lot of energy about being practical, a lot of energy about being structured and disciplined and working hard as well. And Mars here is exalted, right? Mars in this pada is exalted. So I just thought I'd mention that. And my moon is here, by the way. So in, in Western astrology, I'm an Aries moon. In Vedic astrology, I'm a Pisces moon in the nakshatra of Revti, it's at 28 degrees of Pisces, my moon. And in Western, it's at 22 degrees of Aries. So I just thought I'd share that. So to sum it up, I would say that in Vedic, right, it's very similar to Western in the sense of taking action, moving forward, making things happen, right, the sun in Hasta nakshatra. At the same time, focusing on spirituality right and spirituality at the end of it just boils down to choosing love over anything else right and in western that uh, libra aries contradiction is about choosing peace and harmony and love venus over mars right so aligns there it's also to do with taking action in a structured disciplined thought out manner right the trine, Saturn's trying to the sun and sextile to the moon. And in Vedic, the Capricorn influence, almost a similar thing. So that's the moon in a nutshell. And being impulsive, being aggressive, conf confronting others may not be the best thing, right? Working with others, being diplomatic, seeking out peace, choosing love over anything else is extremely important with this one. The next moon is an eclipse, so just be mindful of that. And I hope you enjoyed this reading. Now what I will do is very briefly mention where this moon might fall for your sun and rising sign. Again, I would say that for this part, right, it's best to know your chart. This is a guide. It's not, you know, a definitive. So just use this as a guide to get a ballpark idea of where this moon might be for you. And we are going to start with Aries and then we are going to move on to Pisces. So Aries to Pisces, beginning to the end. So let's get started, right? So Aries, for you, this moon's falling in your first house, right? The moon will be in your first house with Chiron. So there can be a lot of focus on your identity and who you are and the wounds that you might feel can come up, you know, related to you. It could be your identity. It could be your leadership position, things like that. And the sun will be in the seventh house, the house of others. So for you, Aries, it's really magnified in the sense that there's a lot of focus on you, your identity, who you are, as well as, you know, others. So this is the, um, this is the balance that you need to find between your identity and how you connect and relate with others. And the seventh house is also legal issues it's also business partners so those themes can come up as well and the uranus north node conjunction that i spoke about happened in your second house right the second house is the house of material wealth so some change may be beginning to happen that you're working on um, connected to financial matters could be a self-worth as well aries right so just a brief mention of the uranus north node conjunction again so that's what's happening for you with this moon. A lot of focus on your identity and on others. Moving on to Taurus. Taurus Aries is your 12th house, right? The 12th house is to do with your subconscious mind. It's to do with closing out past chapters. It's to do with spiritual matters, these sort of things. So 
this moon is highlighting these things for you and with Chiron there right something from the past or something deep in your subconscious maybe something that you need to work on the sun is in your sixth house highlighting your routine your diet your lifestyle that sort of thing right so those themes of maybe working on your health working on your routine changing it up a little can come up with this moon as well the uranus north node conjunction for you taurus happen in your first house right so changes happening connected to you your identity who you are how the world sees you taurus now moving on to gemini gemini for you this moon is happening in your 11th house of the people that you connect with, the social circles that you have, right? The 11th house is also the house of your hopes, goals and dreams. So that, that's where this moon is for you. And the sun will be in your 5th house of love, romance, creativity, hobbies, fun, children. So themes connected to connecting with people, social networks, your hopes, goals and dreams on one hand and love, romance, creativity having fun right on the other and the uranus north node conjunction for you gemini happened in your 12th house big changes building up for you connected to your subconscious mind connected to spiritual matters closing out the past the 12th house is also the house of drugs delusions addictions depression so big changes there for you since 31st july gemini Moving on to Cancer. Cancer for you, Aries is your 10th house, right? So a lot of energy in your 10th house of business and career and your public image. Chiron is there as well. So maybe something that you need to face or overcome or work with, right? An emotion or a wound in your area of work or public image or social standing. And the sun is in your fourth house, highlighting your family, your deepest roots, where you come from, your home, right? Your deepest emotions, that sort of thing. So this moon will highlight work on one hand and the home on the other, right? Your public image on one hand and your inner world on the other. The Uranus North Node conjunction for you happened on 31st July in your 11th house of your social circle, the people you connect with, your hopes, goals and dreams. So some changes building up there for you, Cancer. Now, Leo, for you, Aries is your ninth house, right? The ninth house is the house of wisdom, philosophy, connecting with foreign cultures, learning something, right? So this moon can highlight these areas for you. The sun will be in your third house, highlighting your... Uh, mind thinking immediate environment maybe siblings can come up um it's also the house of social media right so if you're into social media there can be a lot of focus on that as well for you leo and the uranus north node conjunction for you happened in your 10th house right so a lot of changes building up for you connected to work connected to your public image connected to your business that sort of thing now moving on to virgo virgo aries is your eighth house right so this moon can highlight themes to do with the eighth house the eighth house is the hidden it's the psychological it's the occult it's deep transformation it's intimacy so these themes can come up and the sun is in your second house right so it can highlight themes of finances, appearances, self-worth, on the other hand. And the Uranus North Node conjunction for you happened in your ninth house of foreign travel, of connecting with other cultures, of learning something, right? So that change is building up for you, Virgo. Moving on to Libra. Libra, this moon is happening in your seventh house right the seventh house is the house of others so a lot of focus for you libra on relationships business partnerships legal issues that sort of thing and the sun is in your first house right highlighting you your identity how the world sees you that sort of thing the uranus north node conjunction on 31st july happened in your eighth house of overall transformation psychological changes of the occult and the hidden right so those themes are building up for you as well now moving on to scorpio scorpio for you 
this moon is happening in your sixth house of health, of your routine, of your diet, of your job, that sort of thing. So these themes can come up and the sun will be in your 12th house, right? Closing out past chapters, the subconscious, spiritual things, drugs, delusions, addictions, depression, if those apply to you, all these can come up with the sun in the 12th house. So a lot of focus on closing out past chapters and a lot of focus on your routine and diet and health and all those sort of things. And the Uranus North Node conjunction for you, Scorpio, happened in your seventh house of others, of marriage, of business partners, of legal issues. So change is building up there for you, um, Scorpio. Now, Sag, for you, this moon's happening in your fifth house of love, romance, creativity, hobbies, fun, children, pleasure. And the sun will be in the 11th house of being social, of your hopes, goals, and dreams, that sort of thing. So these two areas are highlighted for you, Sag. And the Uranus North Node conjunction on 31st July happened in your sixth house of health, diet, lifestyle, routine, job, that sort of thing. So change is building up in that area for you, Sag. Now moving on to Capricorn. Capricorn Aries is your fourth house. This moon is highlighting your home. It's highlighting your family. It's highlighting your inner world and your deepest emotions on one hand. With the sun in the 10th house, it is bringing to surface, bringing to light your career, your business, your public image, that sort of thing, Capricorn. And we also have the Uranus North Node conjunction in your fifth house, right? That happened on 31st July. So changes began for you connected to children, hobbies, fun, pleasure, romance, July 31st in this area for you, Capricorn. Aquarius, this moon is happening in your third house of your logical mind, of communicating with others, of social media, of your immediate environment and siblings. So these themes can be highlighted for you. The sun will be in the opposing house, the ninth house, highlighting foreign travel, learning something, connecting with other cultures, that sort of thing for you. Aquarius. The Uranus North Node conjunction for you happened in your fourth house of home, your deepest emotions, your inner world, your family, where you come from, that sort of thing. So changes started for you then and building up now. Now Pisces, this moon is happening in your second house of financial matters of your self-worth, right? So these themes are highlighted with the moon there. The sun is in you in the eighth house, highlighting themes of transformation, psychological themes, themes to do with hidden things coming to the surface, intimate relationships, that sort of thing. So these themes can be highlighted for you with this moon. The Uranus North Node conjunction for you happened in your third house of immediate environment, of your siblings, of communication, social media. So changes building up for you in this area, Pisces. So that was uh, where the moon might be according to your sun rising signs i would recommend watching your rising sign and then your sun sign so that sums it up i would say this is an extremely important moon and be mindful of being impulsive be mindful of being um, you know aggressive or getting into confrontation and thinking of the other person finding a middle ground um, being diplomatic, seeking peace and harmony is important, right? A lot of energy for structured action and um, action in a disciplined way, but we may need to face some pain, something that's holding us back to be able to move forward and take that action. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in one of my other videos. I do post new moon videos, full moon videos. I did post a monthly and I'll look to post one more. So one every week, give or take, right? So I will see you now um, next time. Have a great um, day. Bye.